Hi everybody and welcome to Updates and Favorites. And we're going to start today's favorites with Little Pomeranian Boy. Because we can. Anyways, so today's favorite starting off would definitely be this Pomeranian. Literally obsessed with this tiny little black doggy. A really huge reason to adopt a black dog, especially a male black dog, would be that they are the number one dogs that are placed into kill shelters. Um, and I don't think that's fair. I think definitely regardless of color, definitely regardless of gender, that's just not right. I know that there's a stigma attached with them being bad luck. Um, however, like, he's just too adorable. I mean, look at the way he is sitting too adorable. And he was actually the only male in the litter. And to me, he was the most playful. He's actually the smallest. He's the only teacup in his whole litter. And the one thing I do like about having um, a male dog over a female dog is that they're very like loyal. They definitely attach themselves to you. They are just a sweet little Velcro puppy. And like I said, very loyal. I mean, I just picked him up and he's just sitting in my arms. His little ear keeps twitching because he hears my voice. I just, I love all dogs regardless of gender, so to me, you just have to pick the dog you like the personality of. Sometimes that could be a female, sometimes that could be a male, but um, rescue not adopt is a very big thing. And um, he wants to go down, we'll just let him be. In all honesty, coming back to California was a little easier with the Pomeranian because I had something to come back with. To me, he, he is definitely one of kind, as all dogs are. I know we all feel that way with our pets or our kids. But to me, he's truly, he's just one of a kind. He's perfect. Anyways, and, and he's, in, he's perfectly healthy. Everybody that has ever met him absolutely loves that dog. And I mean loves that dog. So um, he's a little rambunctious, but um, that's the fun of him for sure. But yeah, he's my little superhero. I absolutely love my Batman. Anyways, moving on, other favorites of the month would definitely be slightly better lighting. I just feel like this is more true to life, more true to color. It's not always the most flattering, um, so I'm still going to work on it being more flattering in terms of tutorials. I don't think the camera quality is perfect because this is sort of dated um, technology in a sense. So I am going to work on that a little bit. Um, I, as soon as I get a job, one of my goals is to get a brand new camera for you guys. I already have a really nice Mac computer that I'm still paying off that I love. So another favorite, I guess, would be like my hair. I absolutely love my styles. I'm back with the previous styles I had when I first lived in California. She has come along with me through pretty much my entire journey you've seen now on YouTube, except for like maybe the first few months where I was growing out my hair, I didn't know what direction I wanted it to go, and I inevitably just ended up chopping it all off because I found her. I love my styles, I think she's absolutely terrific. She owns her own little suite now, and she just always does something really fun and fascinating. My hair is violet, I absolutely love it. the lighting, picks it up. I think, you know, the background definitely helps that it's not a stark white background that always causes a glare and a shadow for me. And although this is not the prettiest or the best background, that is something I can work on. But I definitely love the sort of violet -y highlights, the blonde highlights. And the highlights in my hair are definitely much more blonde and gold than the rest of my hair. And the fact that they are toned out. Well, the gold highlights have toner in them. Toner from the main hair color. So those do create a little violet -y cast. And the hair is actually in the cool family and the red family, that makes any sense, because it takes red to make violet. So basically the base of this hair is a 4V. It's a level 4. The lower the number, the darker the hair color. So I've had 3R in the past, I've even been 3VR. And then I think the color I had in Alabama was like a 3RV. So red violet mixed with like a true brown and that was a level five. And usually the level fives fall into the brown category as that one did and then I had a lot of gold highlights pulled through. So we kind of worked around that and played up 
some of the highlights that were still in my hair so it will lighten up quite a bit as I wash it. With that being said, I'm loving the dark look right now so I'm being very taking very horrifically cold showers to maintain how red violet is. Don't wash. I don't wash it every day. And um, when I do, I take an extremely cold, very unfun shower. And now, since my hair is my favorite, I haven't even worn it back yet. I've worn it curly, I've worn it straight, and I don't know which one I like more. I think I like the straight more because it has more of like a, I don't know, like a, like a, um, I like a Chinese look to it, you know, and I like that because I've always loved, or even a Japanese look to it because I've always loved Japanese straight fashion. So I'm really liking it straight. But anyways, my favorite hair products are Nacho Mother's Smooth Moves. This is the Frizz Control Hair Cream, and this does leave a feeling in your hair that makes any any sense at all. It does leave a feeling in your hair. And, um, but it smells really good. It's coconut and silk extracts. And that feeling in your hair is like a stiffness, but it also controls the smoothness and it does leave a nice shine. And I think the reason why it leaves a stiffness, maybe I'm using a little too much of it, but I think that's the control. So it does completely pull out your curls. You can run your fingers through it, but the hair feels almost like drier even when you blow it out before you flat iron it. So it makes the flat iron process really quick and smooth. And this is like the flattest my hair's ever been from doing just an at home flat ironing. And I don't put my flat iron on really, really hot like a professional stylist would because I know what that does to the integrity of your hair. So it's only like this when I come back from the stylist and then I rinse it out and then it never lays like this again until I go back. But so that being said, I love this because it makes it look like I just came back from the salon and um, um, if I feel if I touch like the layers like underneath I can feel that my um, hair is not damaged it's still healthy and you could I could feel that you know my natural sweat and oil glands are still working so my hair is not fried it's healthy and so it's just the product I'm feeling so I highly recommend it it has not broke down my hair when this is not my hair it does go back to its normal shape so it's not causing any mechanical damage obviously a flat iron will cause more damage than this smoothing out your curls causes some amount of mechanical damage anyways and the only reason way to alleviate mechanical damage is to cut all your hair off and start fresh so if you do want smooth hair just to know that the action of smoothing and straightening will will literally and permanently reduce some amount of curl because your hair gets trained basically that training process that we speak of is mechanical damage so the next product I'm really liking is Not Your Mother's Love Your Hue Color Care UV Protectant with Chrome Avail to prevent your hair from fading. If you are a redhead or a violet head like myself, you definitely, definitely, definitely need a UV hair protectant if you are living anywhere south of the border. And I mean anywhere south of the border. And California could not be closer to the border, could not be closer to the <laughs> to the south. Couldn't, it's right there by the ocean. We need this in our lives. And even living back in Alabama, I was on the Gulf Coast, the Gulf of Mexico. I needed this too. Everywhere I go will be coast. I'm a coastal babe. And so this comes with me. The next product I really, really, really love is the Batiste Dry Shampoo. And this is the second time I purchased this. I first found it in Alabama after I heard somebody else rave about it. Maybe it was Makeup Geek that raved about it. And this one is just clear or white as they call it. So if you have dark hair like me, you really need to blend it into the roots. But it has a nice cherry scent. I adore the cherry scent so much. Um, I know Aveda makes a blonde and a dark one. But um, this is a really good affordable variation of dry shampoo. That will be your saving grace. This is really good in lieu of teasing. Very good in lieu of teasing. So at any age, a dry shampoo is highly recommended. Even just to like self freshen up sometimes. Even if you're, even if you're not as oily or producing as much oil as you were. You can get kind of gross feeling, if that makes any sense. Just the natural wear and tear we put on our bodies through the day, through the week. We need to freshen up. And I do recommend taking full body showers 
much more often than we wash our hair. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> So next favorite that I'm going to be speaking of would definitely be um, Whole Foods. Not only does Whole Foods now have a brand new fun little app, let us go ahead and open that. It is called Instacart and if you live in an area where there is Whole Foods, Instacart will deliver to your door and set up your little profile. I think it's always easy to set up with Facebook unless you don't want people seeing that I guess you're online or I don't know I don't think it's that big a deal you can go ahead and enter your zip code I don't really care if people know I bought tofu got like a hair right there yeah I don't really care if people know I bought tofu I mean I share my food anyways <laughs> now if there isn't an instacart available in your area I still highly suggest checking out regular Whole Foods stores simply just because yeah, I still suggest checking out Whole Foods stores because you can create a little a little box buffet in, in in you know for yourself to take home. You can take a couple meals. I think it's very handy for a vegan um, lunch or a vegan breakfast. I used to like to go to Mother's Market Whole Foods after yoga, or if you live alone, if you're single, all those good things. It makes being vegan super super easy because you don't have to be like, well, I gotta go home now and prepare you know, a vegan meal for 10. Now, even if you had to go home and prepare a vegan meal for 10 and it's only you, like let's say you have that amount of groceries, just freeze half of it and, and eat it later. That way you don't get sick of eating the same thing all week. So those are options. Um, but yeah, there's a whole like plethora of things. Now, even if you don't want to be vegan, but you're like, that looks really good. I think I want to try that. I highly recommend trying um, whole plant-based food or just something unique. Um, you know, just to broaden your horizons and taste something different. So you don't have to be vegan to enjoy it. So if something looks good, give it a try. And now Whole Foods does carry meat products. They do carry fish. They do carry cheese. So all in all, I just highly recommend eating whole or more natural foods in general, regardless of like a particular diet. I mean, I think that we, in the, I think the reason the vegan movement has gotten so strong is because people have alleviated eating um, correctly in the first place. It's all about convenience and with stores like Whole Foods and Mother's Market they have made it somewhat convenient. There are things in boxes, there are things in freezers, there are things we can take and create a lunch. So definitely go ahead and check those out and you know it only takes maybe about one more second of your time to jump out of the car and get to the checkout counter and it could actually save you some money. Right now if you go to McDonald's it'll cost you about eight bucks to go through the drive-thru. Now if you go into Whole Foods and you pack a very hearty lunch very big hearty lunch that you can actually split into a lunch and a dinner, it may cost you about 10 so that's $5 per meal. The platform of lifestyle and going back into beauty because we here, we're here for beauty, right? I know that's why a lot of you guys have subscribed to me. I know some of you guys are interested in my lifestyle whether, I'm, whether you're vegan or not and so I thank you for coming back and talking with me, at me, to me, listening to me, humoring me, whatever. And so some of my favorite products this year, or this month, I'm sorry, are eyelashes. Now, in Alabama, I was buying Dollar General eyelashes, and they were very affordable. The cost of living there is cheaper, and so people do get paid lesser wages. But I did like me some Dollar General, and I did like me some Dollar General lashes. And so, with that being said, I do miss some of my old school favorites that I had when I was in California. I used to collect lashes, and right now, since I am in the process of job hunting, I haven't really, like, you know, slayed Sally's Beauty Supply for lashes. I have not gone in there and been like, wanted everything please or anything. Like I, well I was never that crazy frivolous about lashes, but I had quite a collection. And I would go into regular weird beauty supply stores in, you know, little Vietnam and all that and just grab like all these cute little lashes and fun things and unique ideas. But I went ahead and I bought these Ardell Wispies because Wispies are such a phenomenon. I mean, even Walmart carries Wispies. But they're such a phenomenon that they have released the Ardell Wispies. And I don't think I've tried these whatsoever. I honestly have never seen this box. And I would think I would have recalled these because I, I have a lot of f f friends and family that are um, Wispy fans. Because I do have some family members that are in the um, theater theater industry and that's a huge part of how I kind of branched into from costume to to makeup 
was uh, my friend, my family, sorry, excuse me, in theater. But I have never once seen these. And so this is all new to me. And so I picked these up. So other favorite lashes, like right now I am wearing the um, Demi Wispies. I really, really love those. I feel like they're a good, fun, flirtatious lash. They're very bridal. They're very safe. Um, I feel like you really can't go wrong with these lash, lash, lashes. I feel like if you had to have one pair and one pair only in your, in your makeup kit, your makeup bag, your makeup stash, these would definitely be, be it for just about everybody. These are a little smaller than the Dollar General lashes in nuance that I loved to death. Um, so if you're living in the South and um, I totally understand like how things work financially out, out, out there. You got a Dollar General, definitely pick you up some of the Nuance ones. They lay very nicely on the lash. They have a very similar band to the Demi Wispies or the Wispies. Um, I would definitely say Nuance from Dollar General is more Wispy-like and not so much Demi Wispy-like. So, love those. If you want something a little different, you don't know if you want to go long or short, I highly recommend the Ardell Curvies in 415. I have used these before for an interview. Um, and I'm saving them for the next interview because I just adore these. These create just the most beautiful cat eye. These cost $3.99 again. They're from Ardell. Uh, these have actually been my favorite cur uh, curvy lash style in the past. I have tried other curvy lashes from Ardell, and the 415s are what I go back to. So I recognize these right away, and I had to have them. I don't remember them being at Sally's Beauty Supply uh, when I was in Alabama, so I missed these. And I should have just bought them online. Madame Madeline is a great online store. Highly, highly recommend them. They follow me on Instagram, actually. And um, I will be buying from them again in the near future. So highly, highly recommend madamadeline.com. I'll put a link in the bottom bar for that. No affiliation. I don't work for the brand. I think they just follow me on Instagram because I use the hashtag false lashes a lot. And another pair I really love if you like to shop at little Japanese stores is Jewel Love. These are a whole lot of fun and they look very similar to the Ardell 601s. But of course the lash band will be slightly different. These are a two pack with a thicker fuller lash band. So if you're somebody who has a hooded eye, these are great. Now whether you have a hooded eye um, based on your ethnicity or you have a hooded eye based on aging, go ahead and give these a try. These are also nice to try if you're just want to try something affordable and cute. Two packs, three packs, eight packs are usually more affordable than a one pack. Believe it or not, you get more for your money. So, um, I mean, if you're trying it for the first time and you really don't think you're going to stick with it, I would just buy a one pack. But if you think it's something that you're really going to want to evolve with and stick with, then, you know, I definitely, definitely would, would consider getting a two pack. Uh, let's talk about palettes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about palettes. So my f numero uno, number one favorite palette that I pretty much used all month would definitely be Peanut Butter and Jelly. And the reason being is because these shadows spread the love, bananas, extra creamy, peanut butter and nuts about you are the stuff of warm smoky eye life. Not only do they create a beautiful, natural and warm smoky eye that stops everybody in their tracks and asks you what are you wearing, not kidding. But they're also very easy to blend. It's a fairly affordable tin. And I still have yet to break out of my box and truly get down with jam and jelly. And I feel really bad about that. But it's I tend to just pretty much wear neutrals when I'm job hunting. And um, I just like have been mo I, I moved and so I haven't had that much extra energy to exert putting on a lot of extra you know more makeup than I wear to a job interview you know exactly so and I also haven't seen my family in a year and so I've been wanting to more or less catch up with them and so days where I don't have to wear a lot of makeup I really don't want to put on that much so but I've been I've been forcing myself because I think it's a good routine to get into since I'm going back to artistry the next palette I really really love is chocolate bar chocolate bar the original chocolate bar and I don't know why I like the original chocolate bar I feel like a lot of their colors look like colors within the brands that I'm applying for and although I have a lot of makeup these de definitely fit the brand that I've been applying for I'll get into that later if and when I get the job but um, absolutely absolutely love these so, um, white chocolate I've always been obsessed with, as you can see. Marzipan is an oldie but a goodie. It looks very much like Stila's Kitten. 
Um, I definitely love me some creme brulee. Other shades I love are milk chocolate and of course salted caramel. So all of the neutrals, I think it's always good to have a neutral base palette with some exotic pops here and there. I definitely want to get the Bon Bon's palette, especially if I do get, uh, you know, the job I'm up for because it's going to contain a lot of colors that are going to work with me for, you know, that I could sell off my face for that particular counter. That's definitely how I roll. If I work for a cosmetic company that, um, that, you know, I where I'm not going to be buying like singles or whatever, then I definitely make sure I go within my stash and try to sell it from there. You always need to, you always need to market yourself in that respect, like whoever you're working for. Uh, especially when I worked in skincare, I think those neutrals really became a big piece of me. I really played with them and worked with them. And what I love about neutrals is you can create anything from the ground up. You can create anything supernatural, you can create anything like barely dusted on. I'm going to the beach, like beach makeup bronzy beach makeup, glamour beach makeup, like hey I'm going out for a night out with cocktails beach type of makeup, to a very over the top smoky freaking eye. And I feel like thanks to, you know, Naked Palettes and the Chocolate Bar, we've created neutrals with character and I feel like they're, they're beautiful and sultry and hot. Yes, yeah by Kat Von D. Kat Von D is owned by Kendo, who happens to own Sephora and Louis Vuitton owns Sephora. So make that what you will. Choose to buy from her or not. Her brand as an individual entity is cruelty free and Kat Von D is vegan. Again, you have a lot of warms and a lot of cools in here. I'm actually wearing Kat Von D on my eyes today. So without further ado, I am wearing I Need Death. I'm wearing Killing Jar as my transition. I'm wearing Vanish as my all over lid color. I'm wearing Papio as my outer corner color and that is heavily packed on the outer corner, drawn in a V shape and blended out and smoked out. Very heavily smoked out because I don't want that to look like a lot of darkness at all. And then between Papio and Vanish, I placed a little bit of Disintegration which is this gold color which also looks like creme brulee from the chocolate bar. So you can pretty much do the chocolate bar or Kat Von D to get this look. And then um, in order to really, really, really pull those colors together, the gold and vanish, I decided to add just one more tiny touch, one more tiny touch of shadow box, which is a shimmering brown to meet from shimmer to matte and that way it all kind of flowed. And then underneath my eye is a little bit more of that nice shadow box color and a whole lot of vanish from the inner corner of the eyelid. I'm not wearing like a vanilla corner, inner corner or anything, just a straight up color. I love color in the inner corners. It's not done enough and it's fabulous and it makes the whole smoky eye just wrap. And then of course Demi Wispies, eyeliner, waterline is in chocolate and my foundation is in porcelain by Too Faced and it is the Born This Way. This way foundation in porcelain used to match me pretty well. I only went I only went walking along Laguna Beach once and I got this like rosy hue. Um, I was fully clothed and all of a sudden I don't know how I got this rosy hue. It's probably because I sat inside a lot last year. Um, and so my, 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 my body was like, whoa. I honestly did not do any heavy tanning. I'm all pale all over except like right here. <laughs> wanted to address that my foundation used to match and now it doesn't. Um, this used to look very glowy and dewy in the humidity of the south and so it looks a lot more drier on camera now I feel like a little heavy and a little matte so I don't know if that's my skincare or if it's this it could be both attributes and so I'm gonna consider probably getting something I don't know more wet even or more creamy as far as skincare goes definitely need to exploit and I definitely need to buy a mask I think I want to get a hydrating mask real soon because I don't like the way my skin feels at all. And so um, I feel like and the older you get, the more oil and stuff you just want on your body. And I feel like very heavy right now. So if I look cakey to you, I really apologize. And I'm fully aware that my face looks yellow. But um, so I don't know if I'm going to stick with Too Faced because their shade range does pull so yellow. I love the formulation, but I mean, I almost feel like I've spent way too much time trying to make this work now, especially now to match this, that I might just get a tinted moisturizer and call that all off. I have a lot to think about as far as my foundation goes, because I do have one more bottle of this. Or I might just get a cream bronzer and try to warm up my complexion in the face. I think I'm just going to get a cream bronzer probably 
and try to make my last bottle work because I don't like to waste and throw things away. I'd rather re-gift my last bottle of Too Faced Born this way than just to have it sit there and get old, you know? Luckily it hasn't been open so it won't disintegrate, but sometimes products do separate or smell funny after a while, and so if I really do decide I don't like this, I will gift my last bottle highlighter blush I'm probably going to do a job interview later today so I won't get into exactly what's on my face I'll get into that in another video um, but um, as far as all that goes I'm not wearing a lot of face products I don't want too much heavy blush because I, I do look so pale in the face especially with the concealer and the foundations and stuff on um, as far as concealer goes my favorite product is the Anastasia Beverly Hills cream concealer which I just recently bought I love how heavy it is oh Oh, I love how heavy it is. And so with that said, I still might go ahead and get that CC cream because I don't think I need to completely max myself out and look super crazy or cakey or anything like that. I need to look fresh. It's summer. And I already have really heavy bangs and very violet hair. And that's already kind of competing with summer. But I was just ready for it. So this is pretty much, I think, all I'm going to need as far as coverage goes. But it's extremely mullion, extremely creamy, easy to put on. Um, and I don't regret buying it. I've always wanted to get the Kat Von D locket, and I almost did, but then I was like, let's try this out. I've always loved Anastasia. Anastasia. So I was like, that, I need that stuff in my life. As far as my eyebrows are concerned, they match my hair as good as it can be. Obviously, nobody's going to come out of the womb with violet brows. So, really, any brows, but certainly not violet. So, <laughs> I got the. I got. I don't know, the Tamina's is very warm and very chocolatey. I don't want to look like I have Sharpie marker brows, especially if I'm applying to do brows at different places. I need them to look natural. And although they're not perfect, they look fairly natural for drawn on brows. And I have been getting them threaded lately now that I'm back in California. So I think they have a softness to them again. And some of the, there is some natural scarring in my eyebrows, which you can't really step away from because you can't cover texture. You could really only cover discoloration. So there's some texture and some scars and some open spaces that, you know, my skin just will not accept color. But all in all, I think they're feathered in quite nicely. I just love Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. And once again, take your time with Dip Brow Gel or it can look like tattooed on and very... Again, lately, ooh. I need to get some more vegan organic chapstick. I might just swing by Ulta today and grab a chapstick and grab like a sheet mask or something just to freshen up until I can get the mask I want to get. But maybe just a nice little refreshing sheet mask. And um, my lips today, I love this color. I have been wearing this on Instagram a lot. Um, it's actually a dupe for a color I really like that's not cruelty free, but it is Spas Spas Bebe. And it is nice and sheer and almost looks like lushy coral watermelon on my skin tone anyways which is strange because it's like supposed to be a terracotta brown but yes it's named after the iconic vanilla ice song spice spice baby and i love love the luscious uh feel of this so if you want to swing on back to the 90s and you don't know if you want to go too brown too nude or too pink this is a good color for you another really good kind of natural nudie color and it's the combination I'm actually wearing is the Pacifica Natural Minerals Enlightened Gloss and what I love about this gloss is that it is sheer, it's sparkly and even though it's the most natural color in the Pacifica gloss range it's got the most mineral and duochrome shine in it. I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. A lot. Okay so fashion. My favorite place to shop right now is Target. I love Target, Target, whatever, so much because they have really cute affordable things. All the clothes I get compliments on come from there. They all, all their clothes I have from there do have lasted me a significantly long time considering the price point. This romper I'm wearing today, I did purchase at Target. I like its price point. I like its quality. Um, I like that its price point is slightly above Walmart. You know, you know you're getting a better run for your money. Quality product is not going to like break down as soon as you bring it home. One of my favorite work dresses has come from Target. Another one of my favorite stores is TJ Maxx. Not only can you find designer stuff at TJ Maxx, um, not only can you find lesser known brands from maybe like the season before styles. Who cares about the season before? Like if you like it, rock it and just enjoy it. But I really like TJ Maxx. I've gotten all my work shoes there. I've got some really comfy wedges that I've been like trumping around all over Orange County with. Single girls gotta look good. And um, 
yeah, just like just enjoying that. And uh, you know, I've never been, I've been a heels person on and off, and I'm like, yes, yes, heels, heels, yes. And I've never, I've always like, I admire the Mac girls who can wear like those really tall heels to work. So I'm like, geez, okay, well, if I admire them, I need to be there. I need to be doing that. I know heels are bad for your body, so I've been very, you know, I've, I have found some very squishy, very almost like orthopedic heels. Because I'm not about to break my back to look cute, but I am about to look cute. So, TJ Maxx, TJ Maxx, yes. As far as updates and all that are concerned, um, I know I people felt it was very open-ended when um, when I said I moved to California by myself, and I didn't really intend to mean that it be very open-ended. I just kind of wanted to kind of leave it kind of short and sweet, and I because I have a lot of new things going on in my life that are kind of taking my attention away from it. But, I mean, okay. yeah, which is a good thing. I think it's good to sort of focus on what we need to focus on and be present. And which I have been. I've been very present. But I'm also, I'm also single, and that's very new to me. And it's like the first time in three years. And, but I feel, I feel really good about it. I feel like I'm kind of back. And um, I'm not going to get like stuck in a rut or stuck in a hole where I'm only staying inside and focusing on me. I plan on doing really amazing things, getting out, going to makeup shows, even taking myself out to eat, going to theater. I'm not going to be like here by myself. Now, do I want to maintain or stay single? Mm -hmm, I do. And I just want to think about what I want for a while and focus on my career. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I know society says when you reach, I don't know, like my age or whatever, that you should start thinking about, you know, settling down or you should start thinking about having kids and all that stuff. And I think that's just what society thinks uh, women should do. And um, I think you just have to follow your heart and know what's right for you. And whether that's of the moment, in the moment, that's subject to change. That's your choice. And so, yeah. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll thank you for watching.